Now, we now know that there is a strong association between Gaucher disease, particularly type 1 Gaucher disease, and Parkinson's disease and some of its uh, neurological variants. In fact, we now know that the GBA1 gene mutations account for approximately 10% of all of the incidences of genetic caused Parkinson's disease. So these mutations are of relevance in, in, for physicians and clinicians who work with patients with Parkinson's disease as a whole. The important aspect being that a single GBA1 mutation, which is not sufficient to cause Gaucher disease by itself, but leads to a so-called carrier state, is sufficient to increase the risk of Parkinson's disease. There is a good deal of discussion, it was a good deal of discussion at the meeting about the etiology and mechanism by which Gaucher disease leads to an increased risk for Parkinson's disease. But the important message for us to convey to our patients is that the risk is not universal. We've estimated that the risk of developing Parkinson's disease is approximately 5 to 8 percent to negotiate patient by the time they reach age 70 and a little bit higher, perhaps 10 percent uh, when somebody gets to age 80. However, some individuals, such as shown in the patient of mine in the picture here, did develop the disease in his 50s and he unfortunately had a very aggressive uh, course. Contrary to what was felt early on, patients with Gaucher-associated Parkinson's disease can be treated with the current existent Parkinson medications. They're not resistant to treatment, but nevertheless, there is no cure at this time either for sporadic Parkinson's disease or for Gaucher-associated Parkinson's disease, and that has uh, spurred considerable interest in looking at possible treatments. And these include a medicine called Embroxol and a new uh, medication a substrate reduction inhibitor therapy for Gaucher disease, which is currently in clinical investigation. But with the development of these treatments and hopefully with their efficacy, it will be clearly important to detect Parkinson's disease in Gaucher patients as early as possible so that treatment intervention can take place before there are irreversible neurological in, uh, injuries. So in this uh, presentation from uh, Shari Tzedek Hospital and others uh, in Israel, uh, and this work has also been uh, contributed to or uh, presented by other groups, particularly in the United Kingdom, it has become clear that it's possible with careful testing to, uh, to find certain prodromal patterns of involvement which present even as early as 15 to 20 years before patients develop Parkinsonism. So these techniques uh, re range from use of uh, transcranial sonography, concentrating on the substantia nigra, various clinical tests of patients, including uh, the instrumental timed get up and go test, which is actually done for other neurological conditions. Uh, there are certain cognitive tools, such as the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Tool, uh, patient pegboard testing. Uh, there is also a computerized NeuroTrax uh, evaluation tool for cognitive testing. The smell test is, again, a well-known uh, early way of detecting patients with Parkinson's disease and as well as various other machine interventions. The unique aspect of the Shari Tzedek study was that all of these tools were used combined with creation of an algorithm which was able to predict the likely development of Parkinson's disease. It's also significant to remember that Many patients with Gaucher disease, when quizzed carefully about their family history, will turn out to have relatives who have had Parkinson's disease as well, and presumably they are also carriers of GBA1 mutations.